Hey guys, Akil here, trading coach over at www.tier1trading.com. Today I've got three new trades that I want to put on your radar and walk you through. And we got a lot to talk about. We're going to talk 2618, double tops, buying pressure versus selling pressure, pullback trades, decision points, ice zones, and a lot more. So let's uh, hop into it. But before we do, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell if you haven't already. That way you're notified of my next video. All right, let's go. So we're going to start here on Pound Canada, and we're going to start here on the weekly today, which is a higher time frame than what I typically start with. Usually you'll see me start on the daily, then I'll work my way down to the four hour and the hourly here for the, the YouTube video since we stick to mainly the, the longer term trading opportunities. But sometimes you need to go a little bit higher to gain perspective. So I wanted to hop to the weekly here because I really wanted to get a chance to see where price action was trading at and really how relevant this current level of structure is. And a good uh, kind of saying that my mentor taught me early on in my trading days was look left, structure leaves clues. And if we look left here, we can see that pound Canada is currently trading at a pretty significant level of previous structure support. You can see price has tested this level one, two, three times between 2016 and late 2017. Then once again, here in 2019 before finally returning in uh, whatever year this is, 2022. So we know that we're at a pretty significant level of structure support and we should be looking for a potential hold here. Now, in last week's video, we, we spoke about decision points or not sure if it was last week's video here on the trading edge, but the video, the, the live stream where we talked about the, the dollar index and the, the post I put on TradingView talked about decision point areas. And these are going to be key levels of structure where the market is going to either make a decision. It is either going to hold structure. We're going to see a little bounce off of it, offering a counter trend trading opportunity, or we're going to violate structure. And if there is room to the downside, we can see a continuation. So we have that perspective here. As you can see, we ended the week um, with a lower low, lower close candle and uh, a, a pretty decent bear candle as well. If you've been in any of our trainings or watched any of the videos here on YouTube where we talk about understanding the story behind the candlestick and candlestick strength, you'll see that last week was a, a pretty neutral slash weakish uh, bearish candle. Um, this was not the strongest one, but definitely closed in that lower third, closed with a lower low, lower close. So still a pretty strong week here. Now, when we go down to the daily, our situation changes a little bit. And again, keep in mind that we're coming in the structure. We have a little wigglage here. And again, that's just that candlestick forming. Here was previous weeks and kind of spiking back up. And then we came down and created that lower low. So we have a series of lower lows happening here. However, if we look at our RSI, our relative strength index, we have divergence, right? We have a series of higher lows. And if you knew divergence is basically, it doesn't have to be the RSI, it could be any indicator oscillator, basically where price action, what you see on the chart and what you see on your indicator are opposing each other, doing in, uh, going in opposite directions. So again, in this case, lower lows on price, in this case, higher lows on our indicator here. And it doesn't mean that anything is going to happen, but like anything else in the market, these are clues that we want to pay attention to. And as we continue to add these clues together, we can start building a potential case and reason for a trade in a very specific direction. And in this case, this is bullish divergence. So we'd be looking for a short little area of relief. So again, continuing to add on that, we go down to the lower time frame. You can see that we have a retest of structure. Price action made a low right here. We bounced off it, came down here. This is going to look like a, a nice double bottom on a lower time frame. And we have broken the highs of that double bottom. So if we just measure this out real quick and we look at this, here's our first test. Here's our little retracement off of it. Here's our second test giving us a valid double bottom. After we break the peak, right? I don't know if there's a technical term for this. I just call it the peak. Um, after we break the peak of this, this confirms the double bottom and offers two things. It offers, um, it, I mean, you can you can be aggressive and buy it to the upside right on the, the break, or you can wait for a retest. And then if we get a retest either to structure or down here, this would be called a 2618 opportunity, which is essentially a secondary opportunity at entering a double bottom. You would use it if you want a more conservative entry, so maybe you're not sold on a specific area and you want more confirmation, or if you just miss it, right? Sometimes we are asleep and moves happen while we're asleep or while we're at work, what have you. This can be a secondary reason to get involved. 
The final question is, if we get involved, where are we likely to go to? And our next level of structure is going to be right up here. Now, we call these big things elephant candles. If you're familiar with supply and demand, these are going to stand out to you. We could bring our volume profile in as well. Just bring it from this biggest swing up here to start to the finish of this last swing we have and look for kind of spikes in volume. You can see one right at the top of this as well, right? We can start looking for areas on where we think price is gonna go to next. And just to give you a broad range right here, we can kind of fill in the details later. We may actually have an advanced pattern formation as well. I'll check that out. Um, but anywhere between 59, 60s and about 60, 33. So a pretty decent, significant move or opportunity um, from our retest here, wherever this comes to, up to this level right here. Now, I'm just curious real quick because I am I do this analysis for the first time here. Um, nope, we're not going to have advanced pattern formation. So yeah, simple pullback trade, 2618 trade here on the Pound Canada. Next, we're going to head over to Pound Swiss. This is a similar situation, but a little bit different. And again, starting on the weekly to gain perspective, you can see price action has come to a stall. And honestly, a lot of pairs have done this last week was a very high fundamental week of news. Um, and we saw a lot of choppy and sloppy action in the market. But you can see we've come to a pause at our previous level of structure going back to past December, meaning that price action has come down to this level of structure support. We've held, we bounced, didn't really make that far, we bounced again, didn't really make that far, we bounced again, and we're still holding. If we look left, this same level is really the top of a shelf here of a previous level of resistance. This is going to be back in 2020 where price found a ceiling, a ceiling, a ceiling, a ceiling. And don't take the ceiling term too technical. I don't mean like an all time high or anything like that, but you think of support and resistance as being like a ceiling. So something Peter Brandt calls it is the ice zone. I call it a structure swap because I'm not as creative, but imagine support and resistance being like a level of ice, right? Um, when you are below the ice, like a, like a fish or like a frozen lake, when you're below the ice, like a fish, it is kind of like a ceiling stopping you from getting out. This is why we call it resistance. When you're above it, it support stops you from falling in. Um, and again, once uh, once levels of previous structure resistance are broken, they we typically look for them to be act uh, acted as support, and then vice versa. And once levels of support are broken, we typically look for them to be future levels of potential resistance. So we're holding this level right here on the pound Swiss. We're going to fast forward to the four hour chart and really go down to the recent price action which has happened, which is these two little spikes down here. And, and, and honestly, one, one more time from down to the hourly. So we're coming into another one of those shelves right now, and another one of those structure swap ice zones where price action has previously, if I get a little tool out here to make life easier for you, I never know where these things are at. Previously, right, we came into resistance, resistance. Before that, it was support and bad withdrawing these things, but you guys can see it, support is support. Um, this is gonna be a key level of structure, another one of those decision points, where depending on what price action does at this area will dictate our move. If we can hold this area again, you can look for a potential move lower. Now, we've already seen that a few times. Um, if we break it, we would expect a move higher. And if we move higher, where are we likely to go to? Well, we need to look for our next relevant level of price action, which is going to be right up here. So again, giving you a nice little zone between 122, let's call it 122.50s and about 122.80. So a nice little area to keep an eye on here on the pound Swiss hourly for either a bullish or a bearish opportunity. But the bullish opportunity seems a lot more relevant to me um, because if we can take out this level of resistance, um, we're going to get a lot of sellers out the market. Um, the sellers out the market, they've got buy stops in for their protection. So if we do violate this level and scare them out, we should see, should see, that's a tough one to say, we should see a rush of buy orders um, to the upside, or I should say the, the rate of buying should outweigh the rate of selling, and we should see the market push to the upside. So keep an eye on it. So lastly, we're gonna revisit the dollar index. I mentioned this earlier in the video here, something we took a look at last week. And, I, and again, I don't remember if it was, I don't think it was in the trading engine video. I know we did look at it in one of our live stream videos. If you guys aren't checking those out, I go live here on YouTube uh, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning at 7.30 New York. Show you guys the top trading idea that is on my radar for the week ahead. And essentially it's a inside look in the tier one trading New York live trading room where we have discussions and walkthroughs and, and 
And a lot of people have been getting a lot out of it. I actually got a comment the other day of a guy that was, uh, he was watching it. He saw a prediction we made, a prediction came through, and he was just amazed at how we were able to do it. And we just had a little discussion about how you get reps and reps and reps and reps in the market of practicing. You start learning the clues that the market tells you, and you can start making predictions pretty accurately. Now, whether those, whether you get trading opportunities, that's a, a different story, right? Most of the predictions we make we aren't, aren't actual trading opportunities because the rest of the pieces don't come together, entry, stops, targets, all that fun stuff. Um, but it's a really good practice because if you can nail that prediction part, that is by far the most important part of trading, in, in my opinion. And we did a video about that a few weeks ago if you want to check out more on that subject. But we're looking at the dollar index here. And this was at another one of those decision points. Again, popping up to the daily, if I just zoom out and look left. Right. You see, we're at the highs of a previous level of structure going back to 2016. Um, we do have more highs that we can get to. Right. Just again, bigger picture. We're, we're not at the all time highs by any means, um, but we're at the most, uh, you know, this is the highest point we've been to in a while. And again, another one of those ice zones. And if we do break this level, we can certainly run higher um, to one at one of eights, one tens, uh, somewhere around that level. So this is a significant level that we're testing. And we're looking at this level to act in a few ways, right? If we violate this level, then we would look for a reversal trade. Um, and if we hold, we would look for an extension up. You can see some of the notes here. And what was interesting that happened here is we actually held this trade already, right? We came up, we double topped, and then we ended up violating to the downside right here. And this gave me a bearish bias. And we were looking for a retest and an opportunity for a 2618, a bearish 2618, or a bearish kiss of death trade, which is similar to the, what was it, the Pound Canada that I showed you earlier. Now, we rallied all the way up to the highs, and this is the interesting point, right? We got a break and close above, which technically gives us our violation, but then we got an engulfing candle directly after, which for me um, means a false breakout, so we ignore that first signal. So we're still holding structure as far as I'm concerned. This would have been a an aggressive but a good entry for a sell right here in the bearish candle but we're coming back up to retest that level and there may be another opportunity uh, so if you're someone that's aggressive we go down to the hourly we've got an advanced pattern forming here as well if we just kind of measure this out i'll shortcut it in hopes of keeping this video short but we're gonna have a potential bearish bat here if we look at this being our swing high to swing low our x to a right the starting point of our advanced pattern this being our A to B, that first retracement coming to our 50% level. And then our C leg right here, making sure we stay above that A leg. And then for the bat pattern, D completion is gonna be at the 886. And the zone is gonna be from that 886 all the way to the highs of our X leg. So if you are looking for an aggressive sell here, this bat pattern is a perfect example of how you can look for an aggressive sell in the market and trade the kiss of death down. Um, and for you guys that are looking to get long, again, we just need a fresh break. So what I mean by a fresh break is that, um, you know, whatever your, your trading time frame is, we would need a fresh break of the highs, fresh break and close above the highs, I should say. And if we get that, then there's a potential pullback trade here as well. So if you have any questions about anything, whether it's something I talked about in the video, I know I tend to talk fast. If you want clarity on something, um, I do read all the comments. So let me know. Uh, many of them do become episodes of the Trading Coach podcast as well. And if you haven't heard that, it comes out every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on your favorite podcasting app now on Amazon and Audible as well. They're mostly quick little podcast episodes under 20 minutes. I try to keep them with just relevant, helpful uh, information on uh, how you can become a better trader, a better entrepreneur, and uh, hopefully a, a better person in general. So the lessons that I learn and the lessons that I teach to traders that I work with a regular, on a regular basis are talked about in that podcast to help you guys that don't have a chance to kind of be part of the inner circle here. So trying to do as much as I can. And all I ask in response is just uh, support what I'm doing here. Um, and taking a few seconds to hit the like button, uh, sharing it is... Uh, probably the best thing that you can do. So I'll see you guys next week for the live stream again, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 7.30 a.m. New York time. I'll see you next week for the Trading Edge video as well. And of course, I'll see you around on social media land because I'm always there answering questions and talking to traders about trading stuff or sports. <laughs> All right, until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. Take care.